Welcome to Let's Talk Geek! In the show today, in this corner, we have Talcom! And in this corner, we have Ikasa in the showdown of the month. Thank you for watching. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 69. In this episode, we have Gareth Mielen. Hello. Johan Els. Hello. Myself. And, as usual, the mixer. Who shall not be named. They who shall not be named. Uh, we'll tell you why they're never on video later. Um, just going to the events quickly. Um, we have my broadband conference coming up. Uh, which is going to be two awesome. Two weeks from today, which happen, and it's going to be live on the 26th of October. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, we will be broadcasting this live on live.ltnet.tv. Awesome. Um, I think sign-up's done, so if you want to still participate and watch it, uh, please jo- join uh, join and watch this live. I, I, I guess you could p- pitch up for it on the day. Um, you might but get in. You, you might get in, you might get a seat, you might be relegated to one of the spillover venues. Yeah. Uh, and just to emphasize, please, if you are not able to attend, watch the live stream. Yes. Mindset Network will be, we will be recording the whole event and we will rebroadcast it three times after the event, but things like Ak Anastasia will not be part of the rebroadcast. And it's never the same because you're, you can join us in RSC, can you ask can questions. ask questions, you can interact with all the other guys in RSC. I know with the uh, local loop and bundling, which we're going to talk about later, uh, there you could see the RSC going. Yeah, and that's, that and was it, pretty it adds good. a lot to, to the thing. Mm. Um, Registrations are still open. Oh, Registrations are still open, so register, do it please, now. Please register, it's worth going. Um, I, I've enjoyed all, all, I've been to two so far. I'm I've, this will be my fifth. So this will be my it. first. It's, it's cool. Oh, it's cool, you're mm. going to love it. No, it's brilliant. It's a very um, good day. And it's even more people than last time. Yes, no, they're planning. So they've, they've got the big venue. Well, the, the press release I received said a thousand people. Yeah, so. so I think that's registered, uh, registered people. I don't know if they're banking on I think people. they have a limit of a thousand um, well, because that's the big venue. Yeah. And I, I don't know if the press release took into account that people won't pitch. You know, a lot of people register for it and then something happens yeah, on the day. Yeah, but you guys just week. invited people to pitch up. So hopefully the amount of well, people, people that don't did that last year arrive too. will actually get replaced by people that just pitch up. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. so, so but yes, yeah. but it, it's better to, uh, to, to respond and to, you know, register yourself so that they can cater for you. And, and yeah, I was going to say, yeah, we're not going to go into that, but <laughs> <laughs> apparently a lot of people don't always pitch up when they say they have. Uh, then That's just rude. It is very rude. Yeah, that is. That's rude. If, you, if, if anything really happens, you still let them know. But I mean, no, you don't RSVP for events, you don't pitch up. Sorry. Mm. Uh, and look, I can understand things happen. Just reply. Life Sorry. happens. There's yeah. an accident. Life yeah. happens. Please take my name off. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, G South Africa 2.0, 3rd and 4th of November. Please yep. sign up. Please sign uh, up. If you, sign. Haven't re- if you have received a response, please let, let us, us know, know because, because we, we haven't. haven't. Uh, it's a Thursday and a Friday. There's going to be a dev day on the Friday. They swapped it around this year. Oh, okay. They swapped it and around. And then the no, but they said jam as well on the Wednesday. Coding is that jam. the yeah, the coding, the coding jam, jam, jam is the coding day jam. before? Yeah, yeah, the day before yeah. the actual event. So there's actually three days. Yeah, but okay. then no, the sign up for this one. is very interesting. You don't put your name and your number down. Yeah, you, you actually not, not got just a motor your name and your <laughs> you, you have to answer, especially for the dev day, you have to answer a couple of technical questions about Google products, which I had to Google the answers for some of them. I love the one where they said, what Google products are you using? I went to my uh, profile page <laughs> where they show you all the products. <laughs> no, 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 just right, select all, copy. This copy paste all, paste. Yeah. So you have to answer some technical questions and the page right at the end, you can fill in your details and your email address. Cool. Well, so sign up. It's the, yeah, the last one was I'm pretty motiv- good. Motivated pretty hard, but we should be there. Um, one of us should be there. Yeah. I'm hoping at least. I'm trying to get there for both days. I mean, okay. how's that? How many Google products do I use? Well, I, I've signed up for them, but how many of them are you actively using? Who cares? Oh, okay. Well, I like was that in the, the dev sign up? Was that in yes. the dev oh. sign up? Yeah. And a couple that. of them, I'm actually, it's like, what are you, it's like YouTube. Hey, wait a second. No, it wasn't dev. It was actually the other one. No, I use yeah. most of like, these. No. We, we actually use YouTube a lot. Yeah. And I'm actually using the Google CLI and APIs. So any more I can find out would be great. Um, exactly. Cool. Anyway, I'm going to move us yeah, on, no, on a bit. Yeah, but I'm um, using most of these, man. I know you, you went last year and you guys seem to have a blast. Except well, this was the one in Cape Town. Oh, it was lovely. Too, much, too many sweets. Oh, yeah. They start the day with sweets and rock. Sweets, black coffee, and rock. 
Music, techno, sorry, techno music. Oh, that's <laughs> what, I mean, I, I, I was staying with my brother-in-law because it was in Cape Town. Went the morning very because I don't know what the traffic was going to be like. Mm. Drive all the way to, out to the venue because all these things always know we've got enough muffins. Or yeah, a fruit, what, what, a fruit, um, society, something to eat. Man. Everything on a fruit. On a and stick. they literally had these big glass bottles of sweets. Trust Google of, to do of, that. And then, yeah, coffee, lack of filter, strong coffee with r- music, techno, playing in the background. So, yeah, by 10 o'clock, you lack a high. Cool. I um, also want to mention we, we had a winner for our oh, goody. Uh, email competition. I'm just trying to get his name. Um, Brian. Brian Tristan Williams. He actually sent us a couple emails. Um, but the one that actually won it for me is he did a palindrome. So, let's talk at Let's Talk Network, inverted. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, oh, that's pretty clever. And then he came back with a mail that was just brilliant. Um, dear v, v. T, TV, um, Crow Tillastel, let's talk <laughs> network, <laughs> TV. I'm pleased to see that you're able to receive my mail. In my endeavors to track down the rest of the Crow Tillastel family, I have not met with much success. Mock. Crowlesso seems to be an American of no relation to family. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> well, Azok Crowlesso is paying the rent, but no one's home. See you today. Be sure to keep it up, Mr. Killerso. So it was just brilliant. It was, just, it was actually the reply to the email. Just was like, you win. <laughs> <laughs> Well um, done. Congratulations. Yes, yeah, very I, I, nice. I've contacted him, Liam. No, I'm just now organizing. He lives in Johannesburg just so I can get the stuff to him. Okay, cool. Um, so and cool. he's getting one of those he's getting the Texas, Texas instruments and, and, um, and one of the units. Kits. Okay, yeah. that's pretty awesome. All right. Cool. And then local loop on bundling. Uh, no, not yet. Chrome desktop. Oh um, yes, Chrome desktop. It's almost like remembering <laughs> the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We've been here before. It's it's a deja vu. Deja vu. Uh, <laughs> so just we have to tell you. Uh, we got halfway through and we realised we had forgotten to hit record. So we. We started Doing all over. this again. So if we sound like we are a bit disjointed, that would be why. Um, <laughs> they've got to be honest. <laughs> so Chrome decided to give you remote desktop support built into Chrome. Which is very yes, cool. Which you is pretty app. awesome. Um, it is cross-platform. Works apparently on any platform that runs Chrome. So that's pretty much everywhere. I, you know what? It popped into my head. Chrome is coming to Android. The Chrome team is actually busy is building finally? Chrome. Seriously. I've I've seen the that rumors and the cool. and I think some of them were actually confirmed, so it makes a little bit more sense. That's good. That would be awesome if that would actually work with Android as well. Which means from Android or your Chrome netbook, you can tr- can remote desktop into other PCs. Wait, wait, yeah, it, just for the record, it's not possible yet, but it could be very it soon. Be. That that will be very cool. Bearing in mind, this product is not a replacement for the current remote control applications out there. Yet. You actually need... Well, it's a replacement for something like go to my PC. There we go. That's the one I was looking for just now. When we did this when, first when time. <laughs> <laughs> go uh, to my PC. There Cit- we go. Citrix, uh, but more rem- remote desktop. I, I would imagine that they're going to go more to that. You can also allow yourself to remote desktop into certain PCs. Mm. And, and it's, like uh, it's a whole lot simpler than those remote desktop things. Uh, I don't know about go to my PC, how easy that is. Never used it. Right. Never used it myself. But, I mean, it's Chrome. You install a little app, and then that's it. You just have the key okay. that you need you to pass on to someone who remotes. Then you say, I want to now remo- allow remote desktop. Yeah. You then, it gives you a key, which you yeah. then need to, and I would imagine you can regenerate the key. So you can change the key mm. so that they can't. So that it. someone can't hack into your PC. Well, well once you've given it, you regenerate the key yeah. so they can stop getting in. Yeah, and it's probably um, a, a one-time key, I yeah. imagine. Okay. Um, you then, once you've got the key, they put that into their, their Chrome and, and, then and then they can control that your So, I mean, that's really simple. I can do that with my mother. Exactly. My mother knows how Chrome works. Yeah. And I can go to this link, install the app. Give me the key. Yeah, it's maybe not even necessary. Stop like playing with the mouse. If, if you've installed Chrome, you just, the first thing you do is... Come on, just yeah. install. How often have you heard you want to stop somebody's piece of stuff? Stop <laughs> touching the mouse. mouse. Yeah, Please double click and you hear the first one. Click. Okay, double click. Click. Uh. Click. No, a little bit quicker. 
<laughs> so yeah, I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then when the between the two clicks, the mouse moves around. No, I must say, my, my mother's not that not that bad. No, I'm not saying talking about that. Sorry, I must say happy birthday, mom. It's her sixtieth <laughs> today. Hey. <laughs> sorry, I just sixtieth. I have to give a shout out. That, that's fine. And Thank I'm here, know. so you guys know how dedicated I am to the podcast. Seacom. Um, down again. S- down again. Well, yeah, this is why I tried to move away from them. But um, thank you, Telcom. I'm still going. And, and Thanks well, to that uh, Telcom line from, from uh, Rage. From Telcom. From Telcom, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. we got from Rage. Um, I was going to give them actually quite a good shout out because I actually got 10 megs on the line this week. But the first week we didn't. But then the studio one stopped working. They only working. killed my account. The, the, have you emailed them yet? Or, or I have not had. It uh, went down 9 o'clock last night. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah. first time I had time to, I wanted to test. You know, was it down and was it, or was it broken? So yeah, was it all of them here, or was it them down? Was it tonight? And I was sort of just so my home one's still working, Same. And, and there are two separate accounts. I must just say yes. Um, the one here is down, still down. Test it again tonight. So tomorrow I will email them and say what's yeah, what going is up. On. That's um, just wonky. So so anyway, we're going to get kudos, and now, but yeah, Ccom is down, and again, it's something in Egypt. Yes. Apparently, they are doing so. They're trying to build a new line that will stop this and stop their dependence on other people. Yeah. But we'll see what happens with yeah, that. But at, at least the other lines, easy and... and wax. Wax. wax no, we're not using live. wax yet. I think it's live. It just I don't think everybody's bought yeah, capacity on it yet. Oh, well done to deal? MWeb again hmm? for... Um, ah. They full restored their full... 100% uh, of their network capacity... Via other means. They don't specify which other means. Oh, so the other cables. Yeah, which, which other cables. Goodness knows how much that's costing them. Uh, but kudos. They have 100% going again. So, yay. Cool. Um, um, t- t- some quotes. I think the one I liked the most was uh, from OpenWeb, which was, I'm not going to black on the name, uh, CECOM. Mm. The, the cable referred to as the... Phantom cable. The phantom cable. Nice. It was, I just like that the phantom cable. I don't think Seacom likes it. Probably um, not. No. <laughs> but okay, they should go down. Yep. But what other things expect? that went down, I must give a shout out to our poor old BlackBerry users. Oh, again. Who have been down without BlackBerry Messenger for three days. They're going through with rules. It's really things. nice that uh, BlackBerry is giving some quiet time at the passing of Steve Jobs. <laughs> Thank you, BlackBerry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice of you. <laughs> I must say, this actually just highlight the fault with BlackBerry and the whole concept. You know, I have an Android. As long as Wi-Fi works, any other Shana. service goes down. Well, just if, that yeah, one service goes your down. Your telecoms can go down, but you'd still be able to kind of make voice calls over Wi-Fi. You know, maybe some Google Talk, maybe a little bit of Skype. Well, look, if telecom so, goes down, it means across the entire country. Exactly. No so that telecoms. means everyone is down. And the most we've seen is... And know, that's we've one We've had country. little patches. Exactly. So it's worldwide. true that some of these BlackBerry users couldn't make calls. No, I haven't heard I didn't that. see okay. that. As, as far as I know, it was BIS that's down. BES is not affected. It's BIS? BES as well. So our, our, our mixer is shaking head and, and doing it's, all it's sorts of animated gestures. So BES seems to be affected as well. I, the first time that I read, it was they, BIS. They're animated? Animated gestures. You mean that, don't worry. The mixer. <laughs> the yes. mix is animated. Yes, straw the mix is animated. Yes. 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 Um, so I, I think joking. the first time <laughs> room went down, it was BIS only, but now apparently it seems to be BES as well. So now it's just everything. But cool. even if you have Wi-Fi, still nothing. Yeah. Or you can browse at that point, but you can't install yeah, any apps. But, and if BBM apps don't work. BBM is down. Um, if you're not on Wi-Fi, what you can't. I want to say is good luck to those people. Why have you got a BlackBerry in the first place? <laughs> Get yourself a no, proper BBM. I can see why oh. some people have BlackBerry. And, and I know I've why? Got for the uncapped data? Oh, no, it's not capped. Oh, it's not uncapped anymore. It's still uncapped. It's um, still uncapped. That, that, was a, they, they that was a mistake. They reversed quickly. that. Anyway, let's move on from that. <laughs> Get a phone that works. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the mouth. You mean an iPhone? Um, oh! Uh, Alien Devlik. Um, Dolvik. Dolvik. I, call it, I keep on saying <laughs> Devlik. Dalvik, very cool thing uh, for iOS. Run iPad, run Android, Android apps, apps on the iPad. Every, uh, every Apple wants to be an Android. Yeah. Run now Android after apps. After this, the, Android, the Apple can do more. So every Apple it wants can to actually be an do Android. real work. <laughs> so every Apple wants to be an Android. 
So yes, Alien Dalvik. You can run keep Android apps on your <laughs> iOS device. Is it is, is it iPad only? Way, or I must be honest. If I could run Apple apps on an Android tablet, I would go buy one tomorrow. If you could buy, if you, you could buy an Android tablet tomorrow. If I could run Apple apps on an Android tablet, I'd go buy one. I'm tomorrow. not sure I would. Okay. I could, I'd, I'd honestly go buy one tomorrow. Well, there's not going to. D- I mean, what what Android what Apple app is there? Games. Oh, I yes. play a lot, uh, and I do. I love them. Get a Tegra two get and smooths. get into Tegra zone. Um, the Try the yeah, there's there's a the hack for that as well. The comic stuff. Uh, I think you have some comic stuff on Android now too. What AC, AC uh, uh, Android D- Comic Viewer? Looks like it works no, like DC uh, Marvel. The Marvel ones, the DC. Uh, ones I think they're finally coming as well. Anyway, anyway you can run like Android apps on, on your, your PC is as well. As on, yeah. Uh, one thing which we were talking cool about with the Alien Devlik, which is the iOS one, yeah. is I iOS, and I think they want to bring it to other devices as well. So for Mego, so for the the poor people, I, I feel kind of sorry for you, but kind of not, who might go for the N9. I like the N9. The I, N9 is a lovely thing. I do, I can't but it's myself. so sad that there's going to be so very little support for yes. it. Yes. They, they've killed, still, and that just the, kills it. Yes. Yes. But maybe Alien Devlik can do something for it. Uh, uh, no. It's just a little bit of something. Then go buy an Android. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I mean, sorry, if you're going to do that... So after Android. that whole rent and raise last week about this brilliant new phone... I love the phone. I still love the phone. Could rather just I buy an Android. I played with it over the weekend. Yeah. It is I want really, that really nice. It's beautiful. It's lovely. I want that, I just but running Android. <laughs> it's not going to... No, no developer's going to develop for it because um, Nokia's not going to support it. Yeah. They're going to kill it in a year's time. The, the, it's not worth buying because I know they're going to kill it. But it is a lovely, lovely phone. It's 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 the first phone in a long time, besides Android, that I interests me. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm I'm Listen, with someone. I like remember the, someone being like this about Nokia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Android. That you know Android. Android's lovely. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. Going, no, okay, no, no, okay. No, okay. Nokia Android. is going to Listen, whip out. Um, I see this BlackBerry problem is now extended to the Americas. No, it's been worldwide. Yeah, it's worldwide. Africa, Europe, Africa, Europe, Europe East, Asia. Oh, shame. It's worldwide. It's How is Rim going to recover from this? Bad, more bad they're PR not. for them. It's not, it's not what it's they the, need. It's that last, last nail in the coffin. And I mean, America's already mostly abandoned them anyway. Mm. So those are the 10 people in America who actually feel <laughs> the, the burn. But now the rest of the people are going to probably jump ship. By any case. All right. Anyway, um, what we, took, we can also now this the blue... Yes, uh, the, X, the x86 uh, Android Dalvik. Which allows you to run apps on, on your, your Windows, Windows PC. PC. Which I'm really excited for. Why? Sorry, I just want to ask why. Well, um, I'm what, excited what Android as a developer. App, okay, I, I, don't uh, know, okay. I don't know about what Android app I'd need. Well, Maybe some of nice. the cutesy games or, you know, a lot of Android apps we- and some of the games are free. So you can just grab yeah, those and then put them on your Windows more, PC. The way I can see this going is eventually... The apps for the Android platforms and the tablets and everything—that's going to become your your tablet eventually. Okay. Now you're going to have apps on there that are going to sync perfectly across all your Android apps. Mm. And now you sit down, you want this PC, and you want to just grab a piece of information. Okay. And now it syncs now over. Now you pull up your thing. It it's logged into wherever you sync or synchronize all the data, and you can copy and paste and move yeah, it but, around. But that's the thing: the most of the applications you're using on your Android platform are usually syncing to the cloud. It's syncing already. Mm. That's why I'm and, just trying there, there might be a Windows for developers. Port for, great. Yes. Yeah, I'm really excited as a developer because the like, especially the Honeycomb emulator is so slow. Like, you start it, you go make coffee, you come back, yeah. it's still not booted up. You finish your coffee, okay, it's finally booted up, and you can actually run something. But except other, even other then, than you that, can't really run I just anything. Can't get my head around why? Because yes, I understand because your they can. I no, think I that's that. why they do it. Why they did it. I don't run Windows, but I do. If I did run Windows, I'd. And may- maybe this will be a stepping, uh, another stepping stone. You know, maybe they'll port it over to Linux and, and to Mac. And this is also good for Android because I, I would imagine this Android gets everywhere. people using Android bit by bit. You can use mm. Android and eventually replace Windows with Android. When you, you buy well, Windows and then you run an Android stack on top of it. Can you guys and I'm all going to into details if actually um, Google did this development. This is done by a company. Yeah, by yes, third party. Step one, and it's it's indicating that it's possible. And yeah, the professional version of the software, when you've actually paid for it, speaks about that you can go full screen. 
So yes, they're actually probably giving you a stack that is possible to replace your standard Windows PC with mm. a, a Android. Uh, and uh, you know, you have all the buttons. They've they've thought about the interface as well. You have your your regular Android buttons. But I mean, all the motivation at the bottom here. That if you look at it, it's all games. Hey, I'm down with that. More free games. Sorry, it's okay. a thing that a lot of people use. I'm Android just, I, I just, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, to me, why? it does. And eventually, makes sense to your kids. Eventually, this will be the way. No, my, I mean, and it's a good start. I want to start having these Android apps on my PC. So, a development, and b, eventually, and the, those are the apps you're going to be using. Maybe you're that's be u- used to working. What Android apps on, but not just Android apps on your PC. Android. On your yeah, PC. I and, mean, and that's already in the a, works. A We're already getting an, uh, an Android a- x86 port. Well, that will be my question at the next G South Africa. It was my question at the previous one. Is there one coming? G uh, South Africa, November? Yeah, no, 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 no the x86 port. No. Well, my question has always been to, to Google, why are they developing Chrome OS and Android? Especially after what you just said, where Chrome is coming to Android. Chrome is coming to Android, and Android is getting its x86. I can't see why Android Chrome OS should x86. keep... Keep going. Intel Developer Conference. Mm -hmm. I think Jan spoke about it. Um, Google was there, and they also spoke about getting (laughs) Android onto x86 chips, onto Intel chips. Well, that's been done for years. Uh, Yes, but now it's Google officially supporting it. So now it's going to be the latest and greatest. Google would want just a Chrome book because it's a browser. Yes. Which means it's that like everything it's goes through this. It's, I mean, it's insanely you cheap. Need less processing power? Yes. Most, so of your, most of your thing is, is cloud-based. You need less than that. You need less than you do to run your phone eventually no. mm. to run I a, just, a... I still don't, I don't understand the two development parts. I'm sorry. I sort of get but it. Then I know why they're doing it. My mother-in-law bought her that new Acer Spire 1 little netbook. Yeah. Dual boots into Android. Yeah, I saw that, but yeah, it's like Android 2.2 or something. Definitely not built for a desktop. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not built okay, for any kind of desktop. It dual boots into Android. Yeah, but that's because y- they yes. can. Honeycomb is better for, for desktop. I still don't think it's... Um, it, it Well, I still don't think it'll replace your desktop experience mm. out the box. I mean, the, the, the Asus Transformer that I actually have has a mouse pad. It has a trackpad. And it has the full-blown keyboard and it still has the touchscreen. I touch still want to run... Linux. Exactly. And get so it's, it's not a desktop replacement. It's nice because it means I don't dirty up but a screen. But it's progression. Eventually we will get there. Let's get into our main right. topic. Yes. Let's get into our main topic. Local loop. And ba- so ICASA decided to do this open document where they've actually decided and they gave all the stakeholders the option to actually do a written submission regarding what do, what do their interpretation of local loop unbundling involves. And also to get good ideas from everybody else. Well, what, what's the impact? What does everybody think about this whole thing? Mm. So everybody had the opportunity. Um, that was done a couple of weeks ago. They've then had closed hearings with most of those stakeholders to discuss some classified, or not classified, uh, co- uh, confidential. confidential information around their submissions or whatever. Yeah, uh, Telcom and Neotel especially um, had, had some issues with revealing certain parts of their information. Uh, which, which we'll get to a bit later yes. as well with but the telecom one. But then what happened is, and then they took the whole process and they actually summarized it in the, in, in the three days being uh, Tuesday, today and tomorrow, where they've then given um, Tuesday and Wednesday, they've given everybody an hour slot to now do a verbal presentation of their written submission of 45 minutes and then actually t- uh, answer questions from the uh, the council councillors and then uh, also the floor. Yeah. And you're telling me with, with the floor ones, it's actually the guys can't just stand up and ask questions. Yeah, they, they don't stand up and ask questions. You, you write them down on a sheet with your name and the company you're representing um, and then your question. And then it gets handed to the um, chairperson, yeah, the ICASA uh, counselors, and then they read it off. And they, they actually do, um, not, not exactly cherry pick, but they do scan them and make sure that it's relevant to what cool. they're discussing. And on that, yes, to lose to ICASA, the counselors. They've been hammering these guys. Yes. They've been asking the right questions. Yes. That you and can actually see that they've it, gone through the proposals. Yes, yes. It actually feels oh. like ICASA has really done their homework. And with some of the presenters, they haven't. They haven't looked at the proposals. They haven't looked at anything. So they and they nailed. just kind of walk they in there and expect to nailed. have their little say-say. And ICASA is nailing them. Yes. One thing before we get all the stuff will be put on YouTube. Mm. Um, yes. Yes. We yes. And will be rebroadcast on Mindset? No, no, no. That's just no. my broadband. 
Just my broadband. Just my broadband. We'll okay. put all of this on YouTube so you can view it at your own leisure. And, and then I was saying, um, just excuse the fact that the camera angle and stuff is not maybe not the best. Unfortunately, we are not allowed to influence anything of the proceedings. So we got a corner, a corner on the one side, and we got to stay there. And you'll see that sometimes we're grabbing the guys from behind. We apologise mm. for that. We and had some audio problems in the no, the bar, first day. The bar. first day for the first two sessions, the audio wasn't great. I think it's listenable. Um, so we'll we'll actually have a listen and just determine if it is listenable. So if we do put that put that up, excuse the audio quality, but it yeah. got much better from there on in. Uh, but at least the message is getting out, yes. and, and the guys are coming up with very good ideas. Um, and uh, and I think today it's the, the streaming thing is also working really well. Mm. Like with Telcom, we we had quite a lot of people. We'll get back yes. to them. We'll get. We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> have a, well, we'll get back to Telcom. Um, we had a lot of people coming in. But just for and looking sake, at watching uh, the streams. I want to give some more background. As I said, there seems to be like almost two discussions here. There's local wire loop unbundling and local wireless and wireless unbundling. yes well what what came out of it i mean the scope from um ICASA side was basically tell us what you think about llu and then the the, the some of the submissions from the wireless operators um, was touching on the fact that some of them feel that the local loop unbundling for wireless networks are maybe not feasible but they're not they're not against it it's just more that they're trying to say that Technically, it is an issue. Um, sure yeah, I, I, no, I don't, I, I'm sure they know how, but it's. I, I seem to recall Vodacom saying that it didn't make sense. It's more. I, I, I could be wrong. Yeah, and um, I think because unfortunately some of the sessions I missed, and the one that I did see was Cell C that was trying to explain that the whole thing about um, mobile uh, privacy is actually the communication between your mobile and the tower, mm. and local loop unbundling is actually going to compromise that 100. percent Yeah. Now, not understanding technically what he's saying, but it makes a lot of sense. Where well, when you're doing local loop unbundling on a wire uh, wire basis, uh, you you're hoping that nobody's going to tap in between A and B, but at least you've got some security. Well, yeah, I must say, but if you do something similar to like a bit stream, the word bit stream has come up a lot in the last two days, yeah. mm. and there's also not a clear definition of what bit stream is. Okay. Because everybody is interpreting that service as something else. Yeah, some are interpreting it as a service, and some are interpreting it as a facility. A I facility. Think. So uh, I think it was again what? Vodacom that suggested it is not a facility; it is in fact a service. And it's been a question posted to everyone since Vodacom: uh, Do you consider uh, Vodacom's argument valid? Do you agree with? What's it? the difference between a facility and a service? And that I'm I'm not sure, Johan. Well, after this afternoon's last session. I think the whole dictionary is going to be rechecked. Yeah, I don't want to get into too much cool. detail. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, please look, look. A lot of our, a lot of our journals have been there, and they've done a lot more yeah. in their stories please, than what we could ever do. Please go, and they know it go. so much better. I'm, I'm waiting to actually. I'm thinking after all this done, let's maybe get Sa Sam on again, and just ask her explain. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, and okay, we, we but that it. might actually be the best move. Yes. I just want to yes. just go but, through. But in my humble. Yes. Just to come back to your question, um, that was <laughs> Bitstream. What's the difference uh, between, oh, between service and facility? Yeah, between service and facility. Hmm. Everybody is hammering that point because apparently some of the scoping document did mention specifically that some of the services will be unbundled and not facilities. the facilities. Ah, so so the guys are hammering. More. They are, yeah. yeah. Anything you can make a service, you can actually get through already. And there's no rules. Mm. Look, mine is standing of Bitstream is that Talcom pretty much handle it till it comes out of the ADSL network. Because they handle all that. But that's not Bitstream. That's IPCs. No, IPCs further. It's not Bitstream. No, but it's at the exchange. So at the exchange, as it comes out, so you, you've redone the communication, the data comes out. Yeah. You hand that pure Bitstream over to, to the service provider. They were saying they're looking at implementing Bitstream. So mm. we don't have Bitstream yet. No, no, we have. Uh, no, they've tested the stream. They've got, yeah, got testing. Got yeah, they're testing. Yeah. So okay. they're, they're okay. looking at implementing. Um, IPC is something totally different. Yes. You know, and and that's oh, said, there was a Skopsky and whatnot about IPC, IPC as well. Talking about it is that it's pretty much it all gets. So, so let's say you at Centurion. So you basically go down your AS line into the exchange. Then from the exchange, you go over to where all the IPCs meet. So there's mm. one big pool. So you, you, let's say you're talking to somebody literally next door. You don't go into the Centurion Exchange and then straight back out again. No, no. You go all the way back all the to way, Joburg or to Cape Town. I think to it's Cape into the Terraco, 
Um, or there's now an, also an IPC in Cape Town, and there's yeah. now a third one that's that, That's Durban. a point that Mweb uh, drew up as well, and they had the little diagram there with Telcom can do that that little just the the one hop if they detect you know it's local enough, um, where the rest of the players go all the way down and then have to come all the way up. No, I don't think Telcom can do it with IPC. Well, they don't need to. Yes, it's true. They, they can. So maybe not with IPC, but they don't need to be with, using with, that. And that's my assumption with Bitstream you could do that. So that that was also you know it's it's not fair kind yes. of that, well, that Telcom look, can get around line, that while the others okay. can't. It's, it's bottom line, there's a lot of discussion around the terminology for the technologies mm. Mm. and the interpretation of the technologies. There's a lot of discussion around and how does the IPCs work and how does the bitstream work and how does mobile networks and all that stuff. So there's a lot of discussions around that. Now, a lot of the guys doing presentations are actually more legal. Today, definitely. Yes. There's a lot more legal jargon to actually just address but I want to come, I want to uh, quickly, before we get to today, this afternoon, um, this evening, we want to, I just want to quickly move away and just say that um, it's very interesting because there's also three unions that gave presentations yes. specifically regarding what they feel the impact on, on the labor market's going to be. But unfortunately, not one of them had fact. Yeah. Backing up. Uh, well, any, any kind of thing. So these were we, the, before, the communications there, unions. I just Give my view. Okay. Mm. So we had, if essentially we had three views coming out. Um, everybody except the unions were going, we, we want full local loop and bundling. We, we don't believe it's going to happen one at stage. We want to start with Bitstream, which should be the easiest to implement, going full until na naked ADSL, as in I, I connect my equipment to the copper. Yes. Right. Um, but they all say this is not going to happen. We want it staged. Um, every single ISP there or uh, cellular provider, everybody wants that. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, everybody wants, except for the cellular providers, want the cells wireless unbundled as well. Yes. Uh, the cellular providers don't want that unbundled, yes. and the they, these technical complications, which it is not the same as the copper line. We, we're aware yes. of this. I think it'd be cool. More competition is good. Yes. Okay. Uh, including my broadband chatted, and they would also they say that's what consumers want. Yes. Now, the third viewpoint now was the, uh, the, the unions. unions. And they they don't want anything. We want everything the same. Yeah. Yes. They, they if just, you change, we're going to lose jobs. Um, I, I think Solidarity said, it, said in the end that they wouldn't mind it if it was full. And by full, they meant um, wired and wireless. So telecom and the wireless providers need to unbundle. And in that case, they, they don't see any problem with it. Why would that be better? Um, well, I'm assuming because... <laughs> Telcom. They, they don't want to, um, to have Telcom get the benefit or, or not get the benefit. So everyone else gets benefit, Telcom gets nothing. No, so if you unbundle the wireless guys, then my argument Telcom is if can you use say theirs. Telcom can't do it because you're going to lose jobs. Yes. Right. They, they, the their whole argument, argument was, was Telcom can't do it. They're going to lose jobs. They're going to lose Don't get to Telcom. We'll get yeah, to no, Telcom. No, no. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll no, get no, to but Telcom. But the unions, the, the unions said the, yes, the jobs no, and the money, and some of them actually started pulling um, like monetary stats out of nowhere. This is how much money you're going to lose um, implementing or how much you're going to use implementing it. This is how much money you're going to lose in, in lost revenue. And then they didn't put any numbers with the job losses or anything like that. But they pulled these things out of thin air. They, they just started grabbing at things. And I'm going, okay, where did you get these stats and why can't we get stats on what we'll gain from doing this? Well, my view with a lot of this is if you can drop this cost, it means business will have more money and the probability they become more competitive, which means we should hopefully get more money in Mm. and hire more people. Exactly. And that's, that's the point that pretty much everyone else was making was, yes, Telcom may actually have to sack people, but everyone else is going to have to hire people, especially because you have to start servicing people. You have so to start supporting sick, those yes. people. You have to start um, getting your own techies in to service the yes. equipment. So secondly to that, what, what this could be proven overseas is you actually start using more of your copper, yes. which means you actually need... More not people. according to Telcom. Not according to Telcom. But we'll get there. But again, we'll yes. All right. So, okay. yes. Um, All right. that, that's I the see. arguments that the unions made, and that's the argument yeah. that everybody else blew out of the water. And to me, it really felt like the unions came very unprepared. Um, and, and, I mean, that, some of them didn't even know what they were talking about, Who to be quite honest. Who was the came from Limpopo? Was it Celsi or no? Neotel? It was Celsi. The guy that showed us the photos of that uh, telephone pole. 
telephone pole this morning. That was Celsius. That was Celsius. Yes, that was one Celsius. One of the directors from Celsius is actually from Limpopo area, and he was showing. Um, mm. He was he went home this weekend, this last weekend, and on the way back, he actually took photos of literally a a a. A telephone pole with cables hanging off it, and he's saying, and he was saying, I mean, from for, from his point of view, there's there's opportunity, mm. there's there's actually people that can go and fix this up and actually charge for service and everything. And so he drew such an apt analogy as well, um, like he said that they, you know, when they started off, it was a dirt road, and then they tarred the road, and you needed people to, you you suddenly got more cars, so you needed people to fix the cars, you needed car salesmen, you needed secondhand dealers. Yes. So you start up different businesses that you might not even have thought of just by putting infrastructure in place. Yeah. So, he, so he had a very good, I mean, yeah. so but bottom line, the guys are really, and uh, I must just say, MWeb did turn around and said they want uh, the, they want access to the wireless spectrum. Yes. Oh, sorry, to the mobile spectrum. Yes. yes so they yes, want access to, to, to mobile. And again, the SLC made a very good point saying that um, uh, Virgin Mobile and Red Bull, Red Bull. Red Bull are independent service providers renting services from Celsius. Mm. So they're already doing it. Mm. Mm. They're just doing it in a, in, a, in a business model that makes sense. So it's not, it's not last mile unbundling us. They are making their network available to anybody. And they clearly said, and, and, we, not rent, we, and we don't own our own um, equipment. equipment. Yeah. So all the, other, uh, all the other players can gladly rent from the, our supplier. We didn't and say we're exclusive. And so with those people like Red Bull and Virgin, they also they determine how much, how far they can go with renting out, how much service mm -hmm. they need to rent out, we how much is the responsibility of the virtual guy, how much is Celsius' responsibility. And they do those analyses. So, you know, they have different levels depending on how far you want to go. So it's effectively they said that other people can also do this. Yes. Yes. They did. They said cool. there's no, and they, they mentioned the Jago and whatever, and but that. But then, ha <laughs> So we went through yesterday and today with no real surprises or hiccups or people shouting at each other. Yeah, not, nothing, nothing really. Nothing reasonably amicable. Nothing to, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Um, Ikos was asking their questions and some of the people were sitting there looking really uncomfortable and fidgeting and they couldn't really answer. And every now and again, you get a guy who goes, I can't answer that right now. I don't have the technical expertise, but, you know, we'll, we'll write you a letter in, the, in 14 oh, oh yeah, days. We've got to say that. We've got to say that. Ikasa oh, yes. if, did make it available that if you're not comfortable to answer a question on the spot, you've got the right to actually then call on that you'll do a written um, response within t uh, 14 days. So cool. at any stage, if you, if you were posed a question that you're not happy to answer at that point, you could put, call, call on there. And a lot of guys did that. And I imagine, you know, a lot of this is quite technical. So you might go, oh, I don't know how that works. I'm going to go speak to, to the people the who people do know. To supporting me, which yes. is very fair. Yes. yes. And then you can either come back and answer the questions tomorrow or written. And then as we go along, and then there's some questions regarding specifically what Telcom is doing in the market. And the guys would go, yeah, we'll pose it to, uh, to Telcom when we get the opportunity. And so that went on through the, okay, and then this afternoon. Telcom's doing came Telcom's came Telcom's came up. Telcom's I, I, We all knew even the, the people who have been tuning in and you know everyone who was sitting there, we knew that this is the big one. And the room filled up in expectation as well. Like that entire room was packed. We, we got a, a, a nice shot. I, people, believe there was me, standing space. The telecom sat down and they started their presentation by attacking ICASA for the legality of the whole proceedings. Can I, can I just say that that's again? How they started that's how they started their entire thing. <laughs> they attacked ICASA for the legality around the proceedings my question with this okay just let's say they felt this and they're entitled to feel this why bring it up today why not bring it up and when yes, the exactly Ikasa says we're going to be having these hearings yes at that point go why no. not bring it up in private why take it to a public hearing where you have the public standing there with people busy videoing videotaping things and it out you know the journalists busy sitting there mashing out their articles and then attack them not a smooth move. What do you think they thought they'd win some bonus points, points or something? Well, or no, no. What I said to Harriet in the car back, and okay, let me just get, because I see people are chatting in the RC. So what basically happened is they really, this youngster, I don't know, he's probably a good attorney, but he, he attacked. He, he, I want to say he, went, he didn't go personal, but damn, it was getting close. Up to the mm. point where um, the chairman actually called a halt and he said closed quarters and he pulled them out and everybody left the room. 
and they left the room for like 45 minutes or an no, hour. It was how, long. how long was no, no, it? Off. It was quite, quite a while. Was it that long? Flip, it was long. Yeah. We're sitting around, everybody's sitting around. And we're we're sitting there on. twiddling thumbs. Some people started leaving. Uh, not a lot, mind you. Not a lot. Well, not no, a lot uh, unfortunately, I've been working today, so I haven't been quite followed. So, and yeah. All of a sudden, I had to glance at Twitter. It was just like chaos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Like Barney, Barney. Uh, and I must say, just because of that, I think the. I, I know you said it was packed there. Our viewership doubled. Yeah. Yes. As yeah. soon as the telecom thing start, the viewership doubled. It so, was fantastic. Cool. Anyway, so, so what happened next? <laughs> okay, so it came back and I'm not, you know what, I'm not going to defend telecom, but we were talking about this in the car on the racing here to get to the studio so we can be on the podcast. Um, we were talking about, this is exactly what they did when the whole thing about my number portability come, came up. Is the first couple of hearings, they actually walked in with legal about something totally other, about other the proceedings not being in the right order and it's exactly what they did mm. and that's well, the they, they, they didn't um, they, exactly yes. they're busy stalling and they're, they're not tackling any of the actual issues you know that everyone else has been raising how feasible is it you know will, will it cost jobs will it cost money none of that they didn't look at any well they eventually got to something so, that might resemble those things but they attacked the legality so well, next time, you know, so <laughs> really makes sense. If, well, put this way, they want to. This, the longer this takes, so let's say if it does come through, the longer yes. it takes, the more money they make. Yes. Well, their the perce perception is the more money they make. Okay, but then it gets better. So let's get there. Anyway, yes. All right. Ahead. So, okay. So they break up, and I don't know for how long. I don't know if whatever how long they were gone, and they eventually come back, and it looks like everybody came to an agreement with this youngster. He then got the floor again, and he made some statements regarding. Um, the procedure was followed for these public hearings we wasn't happy about. Um, uh, there was some talk about, I mean, it's all legal stuff. Um, publications in the Gazette wasn't done correctly. The clear scope of what these proceedings would actually be covering and leaving it open for interpretation for the submitters and all of that. A oh, bunch of, okay, whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So Exactly. Uh, yeah. A bunch of stuff that they just back and forth. So eventually they decide, okay, they're going to go proceed with the presentation. So then they switch over to this guy that they had come in and do um, a case study taking the figures from an international, I'll tell you now, international telco provider that actually went local loop on bundling. And according to that company's telco's mm. yearly on year returns, returns. Check out it. <laughs> um, uh, showing that the local loop on bundling was actually uh, uh, what. Uh, Bad for the company. They yeah, actually they, lost money. They they lost money and they lost jobs. Over the and last they had three some years. charts and figures, you know, displaying. Nice. It. And I mean, very cool. Is ten percent and everything. Very nice. Yeah. And he had. They had this. Okay. This BT Telecoms and the UK. Yes. And the years in review was basically 2006. You see a grow up to 2007, and then 2008, 2009, and 2010. There's a decline. The same time we had the recession. <laughs> <laughs> So obviously but it's they, because they, of LLU. And he builds his whole case on the fact that local loop on bundling is to blame for all these losses in jobs and losses in income and, and the clearing less and everything. <sighs> and the one councillor says to him, but won't you just contribute all those declines in the fact that we had a global recession over that period? <laughs> <laughs> the wind get taken out of his sail. Uh, uh, yeah, no, his response was, we'll yeah. have to do some further studies and check what the impact of the global recession was. Of on course this. there will, I mean, because I, it wasn't taken into my account. My question with that is, England unbundled when? 2008. No, but they've been doing similar things where they've been allowing guys... 2006. To, yeah. No, from 2000 for some other things with... The way you get multiple guys providing ADSL and ADSL lines, mm. which we're not even there yet. When I was in England in 2002, 2003, that was already there. Okay. So they're already doing a lot of this mm. stuff. And all the slab was saying is ADSL had gone through a huge boom. Yeah. So and it's not quite the same. And, and money-wise, I think Neotel made the point that your GDP, like they, they had the studies there that your GDP – increases not by much it was like less than two percent mm. but when you take into account it's a country's gdp we're talking billions of the rands country's gdp increases yes by like less less no, than two point six you, one one you, point something if you can we're talking billions the country's gdp by half a percent i mean and they, they had those studies it. it's so yeah, so they had that so there's then, that so they went through this whole study then they went into details regarding um why they feel that local loop on bundling okay then they spoke about now this is a 
I'm not going to argue this point. Mm-hmm. I, I, they could be right. What they're saying is, at the point that Telcom became Telcom, because the, he, what he called it, oh, he wants to address some of the myths. Yeah, the myths. The myths. And the one the myth, myths. which is true, it's a myth, mm-hmm. okay, is the fact that the, um, the taxpayer paid for the infrastructure, right? Okay, a lot, wait. A lot of people think that the taxpayer paid for Telcom's paid, infrastructure. Paid, paid for the copper lines, all right. What what they the point they're making, and this was not the hotshot attorney. This was yes, actually one of the yeah, other guys. This was one of the other guys. Um, he said basically when they when Telcom came into being, they took on uh, move or fixed assets, which were the copper lines of one point what a certain Six, amount. Yeah. Okay, but the deficits. So the so the um, the debit books, the loans, outstanding loans, the outstanding bank, all those came to more. Than quite a lot f- more. Quite a lot well. more than the fixed assets. Okay, so when the government said, yeah, Telcom, here fish. you go. No, it doesn't. No. Telcom, here you go. Here's your fixed assets and here's your, your uh, deficit, your, 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 your loans is, and stuff. Mm, this is what you owe the someone. loans were more than the assets. Yeah, but it all depends on what you value those assets at and how that was done. Well, that was done by the government, so there's nothing yeah. that Telcom yeah. can do about that. Yeah, but the fact that Telcom was still willing to do that at that stage and yet all the investors incredibly willing to do it at that stage Tells you it wasn't a bad deal. No, it wasn't a bad deal. Of course not. No, nobody's going to oh, say poor, that. Poor, poor, poor telecom. You know, yeah, they, yeah. they did so bad. Shame where. But that, that's not entirely what's at stake or what, what's the question. If you look at business it's sense, they started in the deficit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but if you and follow it like that. So the argument yeah, about no, the no, taxpayers I've, I've paid a for good, it. a good example to that. Hmm? If I went to uh, Apple mm. and I said... I'm going to buy you guys, but just make sure, take all the properties and everything you own, mm-hmm. right? And we'll say that's one million, and your debt's two million, okay? Mm-hmm. Right there. But Apple is actually worth 10 billion because of how much they're selling. Well, so it's their gross turnover, yes. Yes. Yeah. And Telco's gross turnover, you've got to base it on that. It's not just the copper lines, it's the fact that it was a profitable company, it was making money. It wasn't at and that point, huh? No, remember SA Postal yeah. Service and Telecommunications was in trouble at the point that they broke up away from uh, South African Postal Services. There was, there was, there was um, not not as bad as they made you out to believe because they were profitable with in a very short period of time. That after that, yes, yeah, because they started running as a business and not as a, okay. But let's anyway, not get into yes. that. All right, so that's one of the points they made was one of the myths, and then he addressed some of the other myths that actually local loop and bundling would not. Be good for the economics, and 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 from there it became downhill. From there you got to really watch the recording, because um, one of the one of the th- opening statements was that, and I mean this is where they tell council that the timing for this public hearings were very badly scheduled because Telcom is in their freeze period, so a lot of the questions will not be answered. Not, they won't be able to answer because they'll be giving away competitive advantage. No, 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 no. No, no Telcom's got this freeze. Yeah, there's, there's that yes. too. They can't answer certain questions well, and other questions they can't it's got answer. As with again, because of the freeze, and they'll be giving away competitive advantage, yeah. financial statements, yes. So, so things case, that they'll be giving away information that they don't want. So they, after the questions posed actually, to no. them, the, our response was, well, we are on freeze. We can't answer that question. Right. Yeah. So they really started. Um, and I- eventually the, the, they started just shortening. Instead of saying a full sentence, they just went, Sorry, freeze period. <laughs> and then he'd step away from the microphone. But then I want to come to and you because then there was this one youngster sitting in the corner behind the notebook driving that presentation. And one of the questions was, naked ear, the ADSL. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get the question right. What was the question? What, how feasible is it to implement uh, naked, a, naked ADSL AD. without a dial tone? What, what did the, I would buy that tomorrow. Okay. Telcom's response was, the card that everybody else is also using, I didn't know you can get ADSL from everybody else, but in any case, that card comes with a voice and data circuit. For them to use only the data circuit, they will lose money. Please respond. (laughs) That was Telcom's response to that question. Because it's there, you have to use it. Because we have paid for it, you will pay for it. You will have but a dial But I also tone. know that effectively <laughs> getting the cheapest ADSL, you're paying for the card. Okay? So that, that more expensive 4 meg line that you've got. Oh, the same card. Same card. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not a different card. Mm. They cover the cost there. Mm. 
So I wanted at that point to smack the oak because he's in front of me and say to him, why are you still buying that card? Did you guys like maybe buy 40 million of these things that are well, sitting in a store? Now you've got to no, get rid of them. Blame them if they did. They, yeah. I think with a lot of these things, when you buy the card, that the standard card has that. You know, you, you, you would actually have to buy a more expensive card to have it not removed. That doesn't mean you, 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 you can still not differentiate the services. I want to buy it separately. I want to pay X amount for an ADSL line, mm. right? And I want it across the board because I don't want to be cross subsidizing. Something else for paying for a voice line I don't use. Yep. Also, they have mandates that they have to provide X amount of voice lines. If all the ADSL guys go, go away, I don't need your voice, they lose a lot of, of, of things as well. And well, I, they're just I don't want to be a statistic for voice when I do not use it. Yes. The question was asked how many um, active, how many active lines, lines have you got? Lines. And yeah, they, they were talking uh, specifically installed. Yes. Not, not active, they were talking installed. And the, and the answer was, it's in our financial report for last year. You can look it up there. These acts were like, it was just... Yeah. I've, this is the best. In, and they didn't want to answer questions. They danced around them as much as they could. Best tap dancing I've seen in a while. Yeah, yeah. It was it brilliant. Was, it you was should have seen it. I mean, just add the music. You could see that I go, uh, um, Half of the questions, I mean, he, he, the responses were, we do not see this question has got anything applicable with the current um, hearings, and so we were not going to answer After it. the umpteenth time that they did that, um, the counselor hauled out the big mean book with the entire thing and he started paging through it and he went and he's still busy paging through it and he switches on his mic. He goes, off the top of my head, it has to do with this and this and this. So there's your relevance for you. And he keeps flipping through and eventually he finds it and he goes, Here's your relevance. Page 17 of your own submission. Well, you know, done. you started because speaking about this. Because he's just so sick of them just oh, dancing around these questions. And I can feel it. I can feel his pain. And you can see that he's getting frustrated. But it sounds like the cars did well today. That they, they've, they've been they've doing very, very well face. over the last Finally, two Finally, they're starting to <sighs> yes. save face and fight back. Well, yes. the question is, and, and we need to ask that, and maybe that's one of the questions to post to cars tomorrow. What next? Yeah. After what this, is going to happen after all of this? After this, what's going to happen? I think you, a lot of journalists will be interested in that question too. Just what, what next? What are, we, what are you doing with all the information you've gathered in the last three days? Hmm. What is going to happen? So Hopefully, they're going to go away. They're now going to come up with the proposal. Of this is look, how we... Yeah, ho hopefully, they're going to look at all of it and go, this is what everybody wants. If I may, I mean, out of everything yeah, that went wrong with Telcom things. today, I think they've highlighted that... Um, Policies are required, very, very clear policies, mm. which maybe um, their submission is actually going to guide against or guide for. Um, Telcom, I mean, I don't want to get – Telcom was stating that this whole hearing one – one of the things they were saying is that this is actually not a, not a place to be, to be doing this. It needs to happen at Parliament. ICASA has not got authority on making the decisions on local loop on the bundling. But that's – Attacking, job. Uh, attacking the, the law in place that gives, uh, that according, uh, I guess according to them, allegedly gives ICASA the power to, to do this. What, what, what's what that? The ECA? Yeah, they call, yes. yeah, yeah, they were the throwing ECA. acronyms like They were like, throwing oh, so much yeah. legal jargon in there. I, I understood like 10, 20% of it maybe. Telcom's legal guy and uh, um, obviously he, he took on the old man on the, on yeah, the panel. And on the other side, he took the, the old, lawyer man on on the other side the, who probably wrote some of those laws. And the, and the old man uh, did not stand back to the youngster. No, he <laughs> he did took not. him on <laughs> well. They had a good first yes. fight going back and forth with the microphone. And he was also hauling out the books up, up, to, up to, to the read, point. like quote things at the guy. And he goes, well, here's... Your quote, you're looking for it, there it is for you, written okay, well, down. This is what was done. This, this is what we're talking about here, awesome. here, and here. Let's, cool. let's debate. So overall, it's been very good. I think this whole process, uh, if something happens, obviously, has been very good for the country. Okay. Um, there's you, some serious questions that still need answering. Yes. Serious, serious questions. Are, yeah. There are Look, a it, lot more questions than answers that came out of this. I've seen a lot of people say, you know, it's too late now. Uh, you know, five years late, should have done five years ago. My argument is at least it's starting. Yes. Yeah. Start, let's move. And let's Movement's actually good. do something Movement's just and let's get people talking about it. Yes. Because now you're, as well with a public hearing, you're not just getting the companies talking about it in secret. You're getting everybody in on the, on, on the whole thing. Cool. Pay as you go, ADSL? Well, that was also mentioned. one of the questions. Um, and which that, that, oh, that also had to do with naked ADSL. Yes, again. it was just after the naked yes. ADSL where... 
Um, one of the counselors just asked, okay, so what, how, do you, how do I get DSL on my pay as you go line? And Taco's response was, well, we can't afford to do that because you need to pay for the services. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. In any case, I just thought I'd throw that in there. It was like, so in any case, if you uh, were not able to watch the last two days, what's basically going to happen tomorrow, just quickly, then we're going to move along. Um, every speaker is getting another 15 minutes tomorrow to wrap up. Cool. Um, anything that they decided to not answer in the first presentation, they've got the, op they've got the opportunity to answer tomorrow. Or Telcom give left a lot of questions for the, those 15 minutes. Up to the point that the, the, the chairman uh, chairperson actually said, are yeah. you sure you're going to fit all of this into the 15 minutes tomorrow? You're, you're I'm welcome. happy if you want to start addressing yeah. some of it now. And they you're said, welcome no, to no, address no. those questions. And the, the lawyer guy just leaned forward and he went, your uh, suggestion has been noted. Sat so back. But all that's going to happen tomorrow, they go, oh, we don't have time. So Good luck, because okay. today we also didn't have time, and we sat there for two hours, cool. they two badly. plus hours. They overran um, badly. In any so case, so tomorrow the whole out. day, everybody's getting 15 minutes, and then there's 15 minutes of, oh, sorry, man, hello. <laughs> and then it's 15 minutes for public questions. So that is actually people sitting in the audience. So this is where the journalists are going to get their chance, opportunity mm. to actually ask the questions. So tomorrow, I think, could again get... Pretty ugly and, and could, very, yeah, very overrun quickly. quite a bit again. So, we just asking what time is the stream starting tomorrow? Nine o'clock, probably nine o'clock again. So, 8 30 cool. again. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll try and start at 8 30. Cool. I'm going to move us a bit on from there. I think we've covered cool. most of the stuff. Well, it's been exciting, and yes, yeah, um, we're just happy at Let's Talk Network and Mindset Network is again there. Yeah, and if you want to give it a watch tomorrow, do so. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, I won't be there, so I'll probably be streaming for oh, my He's house making or. me fly solo tomorrow. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I have class, I already missed one today. Uh, but you can watch on live.ltnet.tv. Yes. Tune in. It's good stuff. Cool. Uh, so we, we're hoping to do more and more stuff like this. Yes. Also, yeah, I've been telling uh, a lot of people at the event have actually been asking. So um, I should actually give some of the cards to you. Also, um, with a lot of this stuff, if people want to broadcast it themselves, but using we have the functionality, look within reason what depending on what you're wanting to broadcast. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy to let the guys use our servers and the bandwidth. It's... My thing is I want more of the stuff broadcast from South Africa by us. Yes. Let's not go overseas. Let's get the guys use local bandwidth. Yeah. We, we're trying to build the skills and the technology in here. So we're still working on it. Continue to improve what we have. Mm. And let's try and get there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. All right. And moving along. Uh, now, on a lighter note. Hard drive coffee table. This, is, this, is, from, this, this is from my cousin, Tanki Franku in, in Secunda. Um, he sent us through this today. This is actually the hard drive platter of original 26-inch diameter hard drive. 26-inch. Sure. Oh the guys put onto gosh. a pedestal and he made a coffee table out. Guys, can you think that hard drives were that big? Well, I remember seeing this one, like one of the original ones, which was something stupid like 4 megabytes or 40 megabytes. Or now, how, like how much could you fit on and this And they were guy? busy loading this into, this, this into a plane. But like <laughs> with like a forklift. <laughs> this is just amazing. It's like I mean, crazy. Wouldn't nice. it have been better just to use an old LP or something? But yeah, how's that? I mean, just go down memory lane. And then also, Franco immediately followed that up with a nice picture of actually, yeah, there we go, how the hard drives have actually changed over the years. Now, that's unfortunately inches at the bottom there. But um, mm -hmm. if you look at one on the far right, it's uh, a small, small laptop hard drive. That's the yeah, new, that's, no, that's no, no, no. Isn't is yeah, that, the, this one, that one on the far right is the, the two and a half two, inch. Is that two and a half inch? Yeah. So that's three and a half inch, but then uh, that's, uh, that's five oh, and a half. Yeah, what are those guys? Uh, I, I, check I, it, those I've guys. Had no? How's that? Number four there from <laughs> bottom. I had one of those. You had one of those? 40 megs. Yes. Yes. Minus I don't 20. even remember. We, we had that, uh, that you green, for that. That, that green screen, IBM. Uh, not not IBM. It was a PC compatible or something. I just I thought it was quite amazing to see where we were, where we're going. It just... Yeah, I and mean, now it's not even magnetic anymore. Yeah. Everybody's talking about the sizes, but not a lot of people are showing it like that. The physical the size. physical size. <laughs> is <laughs> crazy. Right. Um, next statement, Asus Slider. Asus Slider. It's pretty over I, here. I, I actually... can actually see it better in the, the corner this there. This one, I know you prefer your uh, Asus yes. Transformer. So, oh, let, let me actually show this to everyone. Uh, it's a tablet, like yay, and what you're seeing there is the IRC. And I hope I don't drop it now. Um, Please don't. Yeah. And there it slides go. out like that. 
It jumps has the keyboard. Out. It, it kind of jumps out. Pretty. It, and that, that's the hinge nice. at the back, which feels pretty good. Uh, pretty sturdy. Seems now, we like did a, a quick comparison hinge. this morning in the car. I mean, the one big thing is that that one doesn't have the double battery. Yeah. Um, so, a couple of things. Tim says he prefers this one over the Transformer. I prefer the flexibility of the Transformer having the tablet and the keyboard separately. So, if I want a tablet, I have a tablet. If I want a netbook, I have a cool netbook. Um, added bonus is the, the keyboard with the Transformer has that extra battery, which gives you an extra six hours or so. And then the extra slots as well. And two what? USB slots, um, a full SD uh, slot. Which this, uh, slide which this one doesn't. Yeah, doesn't have. It doesn't have the full SD slot. It has one USB port on it. It has a, a mini HDMI. I yes. think you pointed out in yes. the car. Um, one question. With hmm. your Transformer, can you swivel the screen around? No. No. See, that, so that, that's what's that's cool about... That's why I like this. Yes, but that's I why... I can tablet, I can walk the, around and say, I suddenly need a keyboard. But the Transformer does detach really easily. Yes. Like, it's just that little switch. You flick, you pull, cool. and off you I go. Touch, I touch it, use it as a tablet. I'm sitting there, I'm sitting in front of the TV, and like, oh, damn it, I need to quickly need my keyboard. Something. I need yeah. to I'm going to stand up, I'm going to walk, so slot it in. Different and, use cases, I, I, I know. But then you just um, switch the on-screen keyboard on. Yeah, or thumb you keyboard. Really? To use this? I, and I have done this. thumb keyboard. Many, many meetings. So, I, I wait, when I have the tablet, have pages and pages of minutes that I've done on my own. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. But I miss a keyboard. And I want the keyboard. I want it just to and me, and that's personal preference. Does it have a control button? Uh, yes, it has one over, it has two, so, okay, two control buttons. So you can use it in SSH. Okay, then I'll, I'll yeah, consider you can still it. Do your <laughs> control and look, I know SSH is not what everybody's going to use the word for, but I spend a lot of time on command line and things. Okay, that, that, and the that's the one keyboard, thing it's you, not... You lose so much yeah, of the screen. Yeah, you lose a lot of screen real estate. Um, about the keyboard then, uh, with, with this one, you only have... One, two, three, four. <laughs> you have. Sorry, we're just laughing at Jan, who, <laughs> who, who just reached and touched his laptop screen <laughs> to I'm try not. tab. Just go to the It's not a tab. touch screen. Oh, anyway. uh, yes, yes, okay, sorry, so with this sorry. keyboard, you have five rows of keys. With the Transform, you have a sixth row at the top with um, special honey, uh, I think honeycomb function keys. So just quick keys to do stuff. There's like a browser key and a quick settings key and your volume keys. With this one, you kind of have the volume keys I on the side. I never use those. I... I don't use them too often, but they're, they're really nice if you need to quickly do stuff. And the back key, that's what I love the most about it. The back key is where escape is. And that's like a natural reflex for a Windows user. Yes. For, well, now me and X Windows users, where is escape? Just press escape. Things will fix themselves. And with this one, I'm hitting tilde the whole time because the back key is here by my finger, but next to spacebar. We didn't say that we're going to get it right the first time. It's more the, the argument is right, detachable keyboard, Built-in yeah. keyboard. It that's has where, a key, and no, the extra. It, they both. Have they keyboards. both have keyboards, and that's what okay. I love about what ASUS is doing here. Is they're doing? They're not just making an iPad clone and putting honeycomb on it like everybody else. They're doing something uh, different. Uh, this, this. Part, part I kind of want to call it an open-faced like netbook. As one, is I have the iPad and I have a Bluetooth keyboard for the iPad. Yeah, and I've so I've often walked away and then have to go to go, get up, get and up go and go fetch, fetch the keyboard. And You're still point, young. Just go and fetch it. <laughs> in any case, <laughs> anyway, the one thing you need to test first still is the HDMI output. So please yes, by next um, week. I, I need to find a cable for that. I don't actually okay. have the cable. We'll, we'll find so, you a cable. Um, cool. yeah. Maybe I should just go out and buy one. We can sponsor that. That'll I, be I, awesome. I, I need one for here to test something. Yeah, so we so can, it's if you HDMI go buy it, into my, I, I will yeah, so my need screen and I need a, a yeah, mini. No, no, I need a mini DVD okay. to test yeah, something. Oh, a mini, mini one over here. Sorry. Cool. And then I'll pay you back for that. So pretty decent. Um, I'll still get the RRP on it. I, I don't think we got it at the show at Rage. Um, and yes, the review will be up eventually. I'm, I'm guessing what? next week. Have you not checked your Twitter feed? What? Oh, no. That, that was the quick review at Rage, yes. or the, the quick oh, first look at Rage. Yes. Now, I'm talking, this is a review unit for my broadband as well. So there will be a written review. Yeah. Um, okay. And most of it will probably be written on this guy itself for me to test the keyboard. Just quick note all the last of the Rage videos are up on YouTube now. Awesome. And Good. if you go via our wiki, you can get. All the links get all together. Of them. The Arkham Asylum one is really cool. Uh, the th these are the ones I've watched. I haven't watched all of them. Uh, Arkham Asylum one. The interview with the organizer guy was really cool. Um, even though I was there, I didn't actually hear what you guys were saying. So you guys should uh, the people uh, on IRC I and the people the listening should one go. because they look. Cool, I couldn't the hear overclocking one was also really um, cool. And we had Derek from my ga my yeah. gaming chatting chatting and there. You could see, he was just. I was like, I can't hear what you're saying. And he was, he's, yeah, he asked some really cool questions. So, as yeah, well. I, watch uh, I haven't watched the one also at the ASUS stand um, with what, that, that really big graphics card, that yes. 16,000 Rand graphics card of theirs. I haven't watched that it one. I still need to do that. 
it was pretty. Cool. I'm going to move this along. Just, we, uh, do you want to make the show too long? Okay. Um, Opera 12 was released. I'm just saying Opera. that. Opera. Graphics acceleration. Cool. Uh, no, uh, yeah, we'll talk about the other one. Wi-Fi in airplanes for Johan has been okayed. Yeah, but that's Wi-Fi. I don't want to use Wi-Fi. I want to use my cell phone. Step one. Step yeah, well, one. Now there's yes, Wi-Fi. You know. <laughs> uh, well, you did something. hear about the, the air stewardess telling the passengers, please switch off your phones. And the BlackBerry people go, no, it's already off. <laughs> Does it by itself. Shame. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, let's get into the kickers. We actually have a couple as opposed to just one, which we should have. Uh, Movember this month, and in uh, because of that, World Beard Championship photos. These beards are awesome. Epic beard. Aw. Cool. Uh, just switch to them a couple. Look at that stash. Okay, now that's a bit Yosemite Sam. Oh, no. That's hectic. <laughs> That's scary. Um, How long has he been growing that? Very cool. The, the links for all, all the pictures will be in the show notes. Please go check them out. Uh, the next one was Pet Halloween Contests or Costume. Oh, no. This one's cool. The poor pets. Now check. W- wait for the mixer to bring it up. This one's very cool. Um, so yeah. This is Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> we have a walker. <laughs> you can see the dog is uncomfortable. <laughs> that poor dog. No, those dogs always look uncomfortable. Okay, good point. Yeah, exactly. Those dogs look like that. Okay, good but point. still, that poor dog. Um, poor dog. <laughs> um, and the last one is the yeah, tech one. I wonder if he knows he's going to lose. Um, and we have a Halloween party, and I want to build one of these. Um, and I was thinking we still got to do the hack for house thing, and maybe when we're house there, for hack. house for hack. Check them out too. Uh, but we're going to go there. I really want to go. And okay. Uh, I think they're journeys. having a, a thing this weekend, <laughs> uh, a course. Yeah, I, I know. I'm probably not <laughs> going as well. But <laughs> uh, they, they have a course this weekend for the energy saver. So uh, no, it's, well, it's well, a course about the, the theory and then actually build starter, your own energy saver. The starter one. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if it's, I guess it's Arduino, but uh, I think they start with basics yeah. and building your own energy saver. So um, that's pretty interesting too. But this one was Cool Pumpkins. It's how to make LED glow in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that like is awesome. Simple watch, put an LED on it. That is awesome. Like a watch battery, sorry. So Add a resistor cool. and off you go. Yeah, you'll need a little bit of a resistor. All right, and with that, we're going to end the show. I just want to thank the mixer. Thank you, mixer. We apparently is never on video because our equipment will break. <laughs> 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 you are brave. You are so brave. <laughs> well, this, this is part of, we've got to do what apparently yeah, the mixer. Yeah, it's okay, yeah, the mixer's yeah. good sport. Uh, Jan Vermeer, you no. Can... Sorry, I'm using <laughs> your brother there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there we go. Sure. Hi, and thanks. I thought we had a long day. Yeah. Um, I've had a long, long year. Um, <laughs> only a pleasure. It's really good to Hawkeys. be back here. It's kind of funny to be sitting on this side without earphones on my ears. It's really weird. Cool. Maybe sound uh, different. Yeah, I sound different too. Yeah. I'm going to have to hear my own voice if I watch the episode. Yes, and I'm yeah. Johan Els. Yeah, else. Sorry, I'm very Johan tired. Underscore else. That's it. And myself, uh, Tim Hawk. At Tim underscore Hawk. Mm. Cool. Thank you for listening. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Good night.